The Object 704 was developed in 1945 on the basis of the IS-2 and the IS-3. The development of this tank was under the supervision of Joseph Cotton. One of the distinct features was the balanced sloped angled armor plates. Another amazing feature of the Object 704 is that it had a max firing range of 13,000 meters. The armor piercing rounds alone could travel over 655 meters a second. Now unfortunately there was only a prototype made of the Object 704 and it passed all its trials but never saw service. My name is Wizard Ken, and I'll be your host this evening for the World of Tanks Xbox One Object 704 review. What's up everyone, Wizard Ken here with another Xbox One World of Tanks video. Today we're going to be finally reviewing the Object 704. Woo! The Tier 9 Russian Nasty Tank Destroyer with that big old 152mm gun on it. Now... I hope you guys enjoyed the little intro that we put on there and I also hope that uh, you guys enjoy the rest of this video because now that I have um, gone to court and uh, got a lot of the pressure that was on me uh, taken off I feel a hundred times better uh, than I have been these last couple of months and I really want to jump in there and start doing some really cool content for you guys and getting back to really doing some awesome reviews now I I've been thinking about this for a while. I've wanted to um, incorporate some stuff that I used to do and some new ideas all combined together. And as you can see, even in the intro, it was pretty snazzy and pretty different than what we uh, have done in the past. And I want to just keep adding on to that. I want to just keep adding to that. So in today's video, uh, we're going to be doing that. So without further ado, let's start talking about uh, the... Uh, itinerary of what we're going to be doing and then jump straight into it. So the first thing you guys are going to be looking at is the armor rating. We're going to be doing an in-depth look at the armor using tank inspector and the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to make sure that you guys understood the armor value and how it gets increased by uh, the angle of the armor and how you can angle your tank and make that increase uh, the, or the armor rating increase even more. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing is an in-depth look at the stats. Now, just like last time, we're going to have some videos playing in the background showing uh, some of that stuff in there, the stats and different things. Uh, we're also going to be showing how uh, the effectiveness of the armor we talked about and see how it does against another tank destroyer, which the other tank destroyer is going to be run by Crazy Roy. Thank you so much for doing that with me. And he's going to be using the Waffle uh, Panzer IV, the Tier 9 German Tank Destroyer, which is a really nasty tank with over 276 penetration with the 12.8 centimeter that he has equipped at this moment in time. So, uh, anyways, after that, we're going to be jumping straight into a battle. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But, anyways, guys, without further ado, let's talk about the armor and then get into the stats. Alright guys, so let's take an in-depth look at the armor rating of the Object 704. Now the reason why I wanted to start with this instead of jumping straight into the stats is because usually when we get to the stats and we talk about the armor, uh, precisely this tank only has 120 millimeters thickness of armor. And people that are still new to the game or don't really understand how the armor rating works, they sit there and think, oh my god, this is a tier 9 tank destroyer. It should have thicker armor than this. I'm going to get destroyed even by a tier 6 tank kind of thing. Um, and yes, they are right in the sense that the armor is lacking, but they don't actually look at the anglement of the armor. Now, you can't just look at a tank and think the armor is the only thing that protects it. It's actually how that armor is arranged or how it's angled on the tank as you can see looking on the side of the object 704 you can see that the anglement of the armor is pretty slanted and i believe that's at a 40 degrees i think uh, i could be mistaken on that but it's a very nice slant now as you slant armor the effectiveness of that armor goes up so our 120 millimeter thickness that we have on the upper glaces or upper um hole actually increases as the armor angles so for instance let's look at the upper plate or upper glazes 
Uh, the green number is not the number we're going to be looking at, but the one underneath that. The armor rating is 120 millimeters. Right underneath that, it says the armor angle is 42 degrees. I was off by two degrees. Anyways, um, but the green number, that's what we're going to be looking at right now, is the effectiveness of that anglement. So as you add the uh, that 42 degrees to the 120 millimeters of thickness of armor, you get an effectiveness of armor of 161. So anybody that pens uh, looks at your tank is like, oh yeah, that's only 120 millimeters thickness of armor, and they shoot 130 millimeters. You know they can pen that much. They're gonna bounce, and they're gonna be like, why am I bouncing? Why am I bouncing? Because this tank actually gets more armor because of how it's angled. Now, of course, most tier eight, nines, and tens that you're going to be facing, yes. Are going to be able to pen you but if we take this tank and we start angling it a little bit as you can see just that little bit of you know angle has increased the armor rating all the way up through as you see down here it's still pretty much the same but look at this it's starting to increase we'll angle it a little bit more 172 187 211 to 12. Now, the reason why you need to understand this stuff is because this is how you should place your tank out in the field. Uh, you might be, of course, our gun can't reach all the way over here uh, to face us right here and shoot at the enemy that might be shooting at him right here. But the neat thing is, is that while you're focusing on somebody else, you can poke out a little bit more because you understand that somebody has to have a lot of pen to be able to you know penetrate you through these areas now as you can see there's some parts on the actual gun mantle itself that doesn't have the greatest thickness of armor um but there's still a good chance that they might hit in the main uh gun area and and bounce because look at that 357 that's just crazy um but yeah one of the things you're going to find out about this tank is even though we can get the effectiveness of this armor way up there you really don't want to rely on it. Uh, I've bounced a couple of T-124 shots uh, by chance, by luck, because I was shooting at somebody and he hit me like this and it, I magically bounced. But the tank we're going to be going against today on a 1v1 is uh, from Crazy Roy's Garage and is going to be the Waffle uh, Panzer IV Tier 9 Tank Destroyer, which is a very nasty tank. And we're pretty much not going to be bouncing anything from him unless he can hit my uh, gun mantle and stuff. And his penetration is 276. So everything we've showed so far on this armor is not going to bounce uh, really anything. Um, you're going to see him really penning us no matter what. And the reason why I wanted to show that and not just us bouncing things is because, you know, you do have to be careful. You know, just because this tank has a very big gun on it doesn't mean that we can sit there and, um, you know, just run in there and kill everybody. No, we have to be very supportive uh, with this tank. You know, we can bounce shots here and there, but we don't have a lot of hit points and we could die pretty quickly um, against some of those tier tents. So anyways, that being said, um, let's go and talk about the stats. Let's jump in there. And do our 1v1 and we'll be um, we'll show you some of the stuff that I'm talking about right now and how the armor not gonna be the greatest uh, defense for you so but we're gonna show how the view range and how you can hide and how pretty much you can be undetected all right guys so I hope you guys enjoyed the armor uh, review in that sense I mean it really does help you out to understand uh, the armor and the effectiveness of the armor, uh, depending on how much it's angled uh, by you or by the uh, the tank itself. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a tank. You know when it says, "Oh, it's only 120 millimeters of thickness." Remember, angling yourself and how the armor is actually placed on the tank and angled by itself uh, can really help you out with determining what you should do with the tank. So after learning a little bit about the armor, let's jump into the uh, stats right now and then we'll talk about how this tank should be played or how I 
have perceived that this tank should be played. So the hit points on this thing is 1,600. It's not a bad amount of hit points, but if you, you know, since you are a tier 9, you can run into a tier 10, specifically a Death Star. Make sure that you watch yourself because he could just one shot you. Uh, the speed on this thing is only 37 kilometers per hour. It's I, I say only, but it's actually not that bad for a tank destroyer. Uh, you know, you can get in and out of places pretty quickly with this thing, but the you know the actual uh, traverse itself isn't the greatest. You are kind of slow on traversing, um, but it's not terrible. The whole armor on this thing, as we already talked about, was 120 in the front, 90 on the side, and 60 on the rear. Do not expect your sides or rear to do anything for you. All your armor is going to be in the front. But even then, uh, you know, after we even talked about how much the armor can go up, don't just think you're a badass. You know, I play this tank very, very defensively in the sense that I like to stay back. Um, you know, when I do have to get encounter like a uh, face-to-face -face kind of thing, I hug the person that I'm fighting. Because hopefully they'll hit my gun mantle because it's pretty thick. Um, but other than that, I try to stay very far away. Because even though I can get my armor to go way up there, I'm still facing tier 8s, 9s, and 10s. And it could be scary going against a tier 10 that does over 300 pen. You know, um, it's not a good thing. Now, as I stated at the very beginning, we are using the 152 millimeter, Which rate of fire is only 3.51 rounds in a minute. Which isn't bad. Um, you know, it, it's it's a big gun. 152 is a big gun. So, uh, you know, as we talked about at the intro, that um, actually I didn't mention this in the tro in intro. I was going to, but I didn't. But when these tank, uh, the prototype was being made, you know, they had the actual round itself inside of the tank, and then they actually had to have the uh, cartridge separate. So it wasn't all one combined thing that you see in some tanks this one actually had separate pieces to it uh when you were loading the gun uh so you'd load the round in there then you would put the charge behind it and then put it in so there was double the work with this thing so i can understand 3.51 uh rounds in a minute because technically in the uh, when i was looking up the history it could only shoot two rounds at max with the crew so we are actually gaining almost um twice that uh, anyways, the penetration on these things, 286, uh, which is really, really awesome. You're going to be able to pen pretty much anything out there. There are some tier 10s that have some nasty armor, but when you do pen, you're going to be great. And if you want to use some paper premium rounds, it goes up to like 300 and something. So you will be able to pen a lot of people. The damage on this thing is nice, 750. I mean, there are other tank destroyers that do 1,000 damage every hit. You know, like the Yacht Panzer E100, the T-123, T-124, uh, and so forth and so forth. But, hey, I, I'm happy with 750. You know, a lot of these tanks have maybe 2,000 hit points. So, within two to three hits, you're going to kill them, um, which is not bad. Not bad at all. Anyways, so, the view range on this thing is 390. So... Let's talk about this a little bit. So the standard uh, view range is 390s. We do have the binoculars on here, and we do have a really good crew on here. This is a crew that I've had for a very long time in the KV-4, I believe, and then I put them into this tank. Now, uh, Crazy Roy uh, is going to be coming at us, and when I first spot him in the open, this is without having any bushes or anything like that, I spotted him at 412. That's with binoculars and everything else like that. Now... For him to spot me is 280. Now, that's with a camo net, too, and also a great crew. So, as long as you're not shooting or anything and you're in the open, you won't get spotted till about 280 um, in view range. So, that's not bad. Um, but now, let's talk about what you're going to um, be seeing if you're behind a bush, which I highly suggest this when you're in a tank destroyer like this. Uh, so we checked it out. Okay, so of course our spotting for Crazy Roy is still going to be the same. Uh, we clocked him about 412 meters out. But for him to actually see me, he had to move up all the way to 45 meters away. That's right, you heard me right. This thing has a above average camera rating okay, by itself. Now we are using, like I said, a camo net. Okay, which helps us out a lot. 
We also are using a bush, which helps us out a lot. We are using an experienced crew, which helps us out a lot. Putting all those three uh, things in there. And my crew's not even the best yet. I could still get better camo rating stuff on here. He, it took him 45 meters to find me. Which is amazing. Now, remember, this is without me firing. And I can tell you this. Crazy Roy's crew on that tank is amazing. They have great stats on them. He's got a lot of things unlocked for him. And so, that being said, you know, he still wasn't able to find me until then. Now, of course, we're going to be shooting at him by now. Uh, way before he gets up to me. But this does allow me, if I do let him come up that close, that does allow me to face hug him, which makes it harder for him to find spots on me to shoot. Uh, and every time I ram him, it does damage. So I could shoot him, ram, 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 shoot, and kill him, where he might be able to get maybe two shots on me uh, in that sense. So just a reminder, if you see a couple of people coming at you, you have no backup, you could sit behind a bush, and hopefully they shouldn't see you. I mean, that's, they had to get, he had to get close. And there wasn't bushes all the way around me. It was just a bush in front of me. A decent bush that went over top of my tank. And that was it. So. But. Uh, anyways guys. That's enough about the stats. Hopefully you guys got some really good information about this. I mean. I, bottom line. Before we get into a battle. This tank needs to be played defensively. It needs to play back behind the crew you do not want to assault with this tank you will die pretty quickly from what i've experienced and for what we can read in the stats and also looking in depthly at the armor keep this thing out of the fight okay uh maybe the tier 10 might be able to do better because it does have an armor uh that has been shaped like the is7 um so oh, maybe that might be able to be played a little bit different but this thing no you don't want this thing uh, being out there so anyways that being said let's take this thing out for spin in a battle alrighty guys we're in arctic region standard battle and I'm gonna laugh about something when the loading screen was up it was saying arctic region training I'm like Okay, so there's a glitch where if you play the training missions, then go, go into a regular battle, it'll act like this. Anyways, we're going to be seeing tier 10s, tier 9s, and tier 8s. So everything that we talked about earlier, we're going to be seeing. And so our plan for this map is going to be very uh, defensive. We're going to try to sneak around and basically just make sure nobody sees us, uh, which may or may not be an easy thing to do. Uh, I don't particularly like being on this side when I'm this tank just because there's not really good spots to go to or in my opinion I don't like a lot of the spots that I have uh, that I'm forced to go to uh, to be able to fight people uh, you know particularly this spot uh, Artie since there is one here can pretty much hit me here uh, depending on what it is it is a back chat 155 55 which probably isn't gonna be able to hit me there but if you got a British uh, artillery those things can shoot straight up in the air and knock the crap out of you and come straight down they're really good at being able to shoot over mountains and stuff now this isn't bad either I can see down this way a little bit if people come out into the open but most people don't now we do have a spot to the right that we can watch uh, where a lot of these guys are probably gonna go uh, but the problem is is that it the, the distance near there is not the greatest uh, and they're probably gonna spot us they're probably going to spot us if we're not careful. Especially after we shoot. They're going to shoot at us. And they do have tank destroyers coming. We've got uh, Carnarvon, uh, what is this, Tiger 2. And something magical that I can't pick up. Because the game wants me to look at my friend, the chipmunk. Yay. But anyways, I guess we're going to sit here and see what we can do. Uh, I'm not going to push forward. These guys can do what they want. But there's no way for me to go over there and shoot at these guys without being seen in some way. There is a Yog Tiger. We're going to try for it and we're going to bounce. Yeah, I kind of figured. He's got about... Uh, he's got a decent amount of armor right there. Plus the effectiveness of that armor is really, really nice. Now this uh, Carnarvon, if he sits there and our gun just drops. Boop. Just goes straight down. Instead of actually hitting. <sighs> now 
not good at all. Not good at all. And we're not going to get... Yeah, I was going to say, if we actually get points on that tank, it's not going to be very good. Not going to be a lot at all. Oh, we actually got them. I was going to say, I don't know if that's going to go through or not. Our team is definitely pushing pretty good over here, but the problem is, is they don't, they're not letting anybody come around, which isn't allowing me to actually get any shots on anyone. And we're going to actually have to push up there to hit anybody. And I don't like having to do that. I'm really not enjoying having to do this. But my guys are almost dead. There are only two guys there, but... Oh my god, that's a Waffle E100. I wish I would have known that. I wouldn't have come up here. I would have let him just come back and get us. Mm, there is a T49. Looks like he might try to uh, come after us. And our team. Yeah, he looks like he's going to try to do some pop shots. There's a T-110E4 out there. Even more exciting. Ooh. Tried to quick shoot it. Could not get it in there. And this is probably going to hurt. Ooh, he bounced it. Where did he hit at? Where did he hit at? Ah, it looks like the gun mantle, possibly. Ooh. Gun mantle saved our bumps. Do have artillery trying to shoot at us, so we're just going to back away. He's definitely focused on this corner, and rightly so, because our team has been really pushing that side a lot. Uh, but these guys are being idiots. Instead of, you know, trying to fall back and letting the T-28 and me help them out, uh, they're going to just keep pushing. This is one thing that you need to pay attention when you're in a game. You know, if, if you had a lot of guys down here and you are killing some of theirs, but they're killing you back and you guys barely have any life, it might be best if you pull back and let your tank destroyers do some damage. I mean, that's what we're here for is to help support you so that you can continue pushing later on. Just because you can't kill everybody that you wanted to over here doesn't mean you're a crappy person. It just means that you need to play as a team. Let your other guys get in there and do some work. You know, just keep them, you know, um, spotted for the tank destroyers. And there you go. See what happens. Um, I don't think I'm going to spot anybody out here. And look at that. They still have more reinforcements down here. And these guys are just going to die. This is this is not good. There's a T-110E4. And I missed. I missed. That sucks. That sucks. Might be able to get him up there. Nope, bounced it. This is a very... Uh, it's very hard to see if I'm going to be able to hit that or not. Because I think, to be honest with you, I'm not in a position to be hitting him like that. See, I'm, there must be enough of an embankment right there that I just can't get a good hit on him. That has to be the situation that we're in right now. And he's probably going to make it over there without me being able to shoot him. Yep. Looks exactly what's going to happen. No shots on him. None whatsoever. So once again, we have to push up into an unknown area. Where we definitely need somebody else spotting for us. We might be able to help our guys out over here. And we missed. Don't know where that round went, but... I thought for sure we had a good dead eye on him. Focus on this area. 
Yes, these people want me to focus on this area after I've already pushed up way too far. I, I won't be able to do it. Okay. Alright, well, I guess we're going to have to just do what we can up here. Hopefully that Waffly 100 is reloading. T-110E4 is not paying attention, hopefully. Uh, hopefully they're coming down that way, and we can kill them from behind. This is definitely not an ideal uh, situation that we're in. And I'd rather have... Somebody else kill that guy. The Waffle still hasn't killed him yet. Thank you, Waffle. You are my bestie now. Alright, get rid of the one bastard. We need to get rid of the Waffle E100 because he's going to be the one that's going to hurt us the most. Shooting us over and over again. Thankfully, we were able to get him, um, and he wasn't able to kill us. So we still have a T124 and a Waffle Tier 9 down there. And I didn't get a chance to look at how much life the Waffle had, because we had to kind of clutch shot that one. So it looks like the T124 is just heading straight for the base. So if we can come around here and get the Waffle, it might be okay. Well... How much life does he have? We might have to just push this just to do it. Yep. Got it. Alright, good. That's all I wanted to see. That's all I wanted to see was him have no life. Because that could have been very bad for us if he had a lot more life than that. Alright, we're zooming in. There we go. And ammo rack. So we started out pretty shitty with this tank. Just because of the map and the way our team was playing. But now we're coming back. And uh, we got a couple extra hits in there. I don't think we're going to get another hit on this guy. Highly doubt it. But I know me and the T-62A. If these two guys die, the Waffle and the E-50 die, that we'll be able to uh, withstand. But it looks like he sh missed. There was a piece of uh, dirt that came up. So it looks like he might have missed. Yep. He must have. Alright. Good game for these guys. Probably not for us. Alrighty guys. So we got 13,000 silver. 3,000 in experience points. Only 1,777 uh, in damage. 3 destroyed. 4 penetrations. 2 detections. 760 in def uh, assisting. And 1,120 1 blocked. Um, and then we got Hunt the Hunter, uh, which is destroy one or more tank destroyers. Okay, whatever. All right, so we came in third place. So, as I said, I didn't think we were going to do great on that map. I had my doubts about it, but, uh, we're going to jump into another battle anyways and see how we can do. Hopefully, we get a better open map. I, like I said, I don't care for that map that much for that tank. I'd rather use it on a different map. Um, uh, let's see, Yuck Tiger, <laughs> we got the 97 points out of him. I really did not think I was going to pen him, um, where I was. I mean, it was a 50-50 chance of being able to do it. Detected the T-49, damaged the T-124, and detected him. Uh, the VK, we detected him, I guess. Uh, let's see, 393 on the Waffle, 556 on the, uh... Waffle E100. And there we go. Alright guys, so we're on Corellia Standard Battle. We're going to be going against Tier 9s, Tier 8s, and Tier 7s. So a little bit different than the first battle. Now, I left the first battle in there because, you know, I, if you sit there and just show all good battles, you're getting a misperception of even the game World of Tanks. Uh, you can sit there and do great battles in every single tank and only show those in a video. But the problem is, is that you need to show the things that realistically happen, okay? I'm not going to win every single time with this tank or another tank or anything like that. But it's okay if I show wins. It's okay if I show loses too because you can say, hey, this is why you need to, you know, act a certain way in this tank because, you know, if you do something like this, this, and this, you're going to get blown up. 
And uh, as you can see on that last map, uh, you know, that map wasn't the greatest for me. You know, it might have been good for somebody else that was playing this tank, but I don't care for that map with this tank because of the areas I like to go to. And it didn't work out particularly well for me. But hopefully in the end, um, this map won't be as bad. I've actually done pretty well in this map before. And I'm, you know, as long as I can get into a good position, which unfortunately I was last to the draw to get here and start moving over here. A lot of these guys are probably going to get some good shots on people. And I'm probably not going to get any good shots on people. Look at that. Some of their team is already going up to the top. We're going to get spotted over here, which is not good. Uh, it is an IS-6, but it's not good to have him coming over here. And there's nowhere I can really hit him that can damage him at the moment. Ooh, but there is a T-28, and we could definitely knock the crap out of him. Might have to move a little bit. Because I'm not enjoying the fact that I was getting spotted up there. Alright, so hopefully we can get some shots on these guys. But unfortunately, we are short. That's one problem you're going to see with this tank. You are short. And so, having to move out into the open sometimes just to get spots on people can really be sucky. Uh, it looks like their team might have pushed back. I have no shots on that KV-4. I'm probably going to bounce if I do shoot at him. There is a Tiger-2. No shots on him. Uh, our, side, our other side might do bad. We might have to move. We're going to have to move over to the left more. We're just not getting any shots into any of these guys that are poking around the corner. And I really want to get a shot on these guys. There we go. There's a good hit on the Tiger. The KV-4 is still there. Still a nasty tank, man. I love that tank. It's a very good tank. You haven't gone down that line. I think I suggest it's one of the best lines to go down um, if you're new to heavy lines. Because it's very easy to play. You don't really have, you know, crappy tanks to play with. Um... They're all really pretty OP. So, and that KV-4 is probably going to die from somebody else. We're still going to shoot and miss. But, yeah. There's a T-54, which, gosh, if we were loaded up right now, would love to see me. Might still get a good shot on him. There we go. Oh, got the butt end of him. I was kind of worried about that. I'm actually going to turn around and start getting the going the other way because I'm feeling that uh, we're going to lose the hill. We're going to lose the hill, and I ran into a rock, so not uh, not the best. Oh, screw it! Let's just go. I'm not worried if that T-37 sees me or not. There's no more artillery. But apparently there is an ISA up there. Shit. Did not pay attention to this shit. Eat it, RHM. Alright, he's going to head up the hill probably. Need to get over there. That Centurion jumped down. See, there's nothing I can do. I can't get back to the base. I'm going to get shot from one side or another. It's not a good thing. There's the IS-8. Turn, 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 turn. Knock the shit out of them. There we go. Run away. Let's, let's just back away. If their team wants to win by capping, that's fine. But this has turned out to be an awesome battle. A really awesome battle. We are bouncing some stuff here and there. Hoping for another kill. We got another kill in there. Oh, the OBJ704. My brother shot me. 
Oh, we got hit by the Centurion. Is this going to be the end of us? Possibly. Oh, saved by the defeat. <laughs> Alrighty, so we did a lot better that time. Wow, that actually turned out to be a really good battle. Unfortunately, we just weren't able to get back to the flag. And I, I swear, if those guys in the flag would have came after us, it would have turned into even from an awesome battle to an amazing battle. Because it would have been... Oh, you know, we were pretty even there at the end. Pretty much the same amount of people uh, left on both sides. All right, so we did 17,000 in silver, 865 in experience points. Three tanks destroyed, 3,360 damage, six penetrations, 575 blocked. So pretty much we were just bouncing that small little light tank. Uh, I came in first place, which is not bad. Um, did a decent amount of damage, really did. So we had me... So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people on our team. And they had one, two, three, four, five. So we were pretty close to having the same amount of people. Uh, they didn't have really a bad team still on that side. And I mean, we had some nasty stuff like the Og Tiger, me, the E75. So I guess it would have been the best thing for them to do was to cap. But uh, man, if they would have kept fighting, it would have been great. Uh, T28, 723 out of him. The uh, Tiger 2, 633 RHM, 749, T54, 168, and 1087 on the uh, IS-8. So not a bad amount of damage. Alrighty, guys. So we're going to be wrapping up this video real quick and my thoughts on this tank. Now, let's start with the good things. The good things on this tank is that you definitely get a nice hard-hitting gun uh, at the end of this line it's not a very long uh package list that you have to do um you can go straight over to the obj 704 uh b package and then the bl uh package so um which is not bad so you get the big gun right there uh off of your first package when you unlock which i don't mind that one bit it was nice to get be able to unlock that pretty quickly then you can unlock this one if you want to i suggest it just because you get a better radio and the uh traverse and stuff like that gets a little bit better um as you're going and then uh that's it i didn't unlock this one didn't need it because it was the tier 8 gun i would, i said i might as well just save up and get this one so which which helped out a lot like I said, not very bad. The only problem you're going to have is when you go to the tier 10, that's 301,000 experience points, which we are only 7,000 away from. So, we will be jumping on that pretty soon. Um, like I said, I have a really good crew in here. So, it does pretty well. This is the stuff I have on mine. Camouflage, net, enhanced gun link drive, and binoculars. Uh, you definitely want to have a uh, enhanced gun link drive. It just, it just works pretty nice for it. Um, binoculars, you really want to have that in the camo net. You want to keep this thing protected as much as possible. Uh, I have to say I love the camo on this thing. Um, the speed's really nice on it. The gun's not bad. I do have my misfires here and there where the rounds want to just go wherever they want. But for the most part, this is a pretty badass tank all around. Now, the bad parts on this, the armor on this thing, uh, for me, does not do it justice at all. If you do get in a position where we were at the last battle, uh, where people were near us, we were only bouncing the light tank. We weren't bouncing anybody else's stuff. And we know that because of how much actual, you know, uh, stuff we bounced. Anyways, that being said, um, you know, I don't like that point of it. Uh, I would wish that this had a little bit better armor, especially for the tier it was. Also, the hit points. I wish instead of 1,600, it would probably be about 1,800. Um, I think that's a better thing for tier 9 since we're going to be seeing, you know, mostly tier 8s, 9s, and 10s anyways. Um, that's what I was hoping for, but that's okay. It's okay. Um, I haven't really caught on fire with this thing. It's been pretty good. Uh, mostly I just get killed, uh, you know. Um, haven't really been tracked too much on this because most people know they can pen me. So they just shoot at me and stop tracking me. Uh, to get around me uh the slow traverse is something that's not the greatest uh but you you'll work with it you'll figure out the best ways of working with this tank and stuff just if someone and if some small shit gets behind you um yeah just just do what you can uh this thing is pretty uh decently heavy so don't forget if you have to ram with this thing because you will do damage 
to other tanks. I have rammed a couple of heavy tanks and it doesn't do bad. Uh, I do take some damage, but hey, they are too. And as soon as I get reloaded, I'm going to kill them. So remember that. Uh, you know, I w rammed the Waffle Tier 9 of Roy's and I did over 100 damage to him. So, yeah, don't forget, you can ram with certain tanks. Uh, all in all, I think this has been an amazing tank. Uh, you know, it's been fun. It's been great. Uh, it's been a great line so far. It's It's got a really nasty gun. I can't wait to get to Tier 10. I'm so close to it. Um, all in all, I think this is a pretty decent tank for, uh, you know, for a, a new player to play. It's It's not bad. It doesn't take long to figure out. Uh, at all I think it's it's fun it's fun I know I keep repeating myself but it, it really is it's a really good tank uh, to go on and I know a lot of you guys can do a lot better than I can on this but I like giving a perspective of an average tank player not somebody that uh, is going to be an expert all the time because I want people to know I'm an average player and that when you know you're going to sit down and play this thing it's not going to be too hard for you to learn and stuff. I think it's a pretty easy tank to grasp and, and learn how to play. Uh, it's not like some of those tanks that I've played in the past, which have been just terrible. Anyways, guys, enough of me jabbering. Let me know what you guys think about the new format of the reviews. I will be adding more stuff to these things, too. Uh, but it's getting pretty late right now. I still have to edit this thing and put everything together. So, um, anyways, leave a comment. Hit the like button. And uh, until next time, guys, uh, tomorrow's going to be Wednesday, so make sure you guys come out and see me and the bearded guys having some fun, playing around, stuff like that. Alrighty, guys, till next time, see ya.